What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with more Railroads Online, and today I've gone ahead and connected to the final industry, the oil refinery, and oh my god, this place is a nightmare. It's up on a platform, so we had to build this whole ramp to get down and look at these freaking drop-off locations. I thought the smelter was bad with just the cordwood as a single lane, but look at this, we gotta deliver lumber and steel pipes and oil barrels in this ridiculous configuration. Now, I don't know how much lumber and steel pipes we need, so obviously we've got you know, relatively small lanes here. Probably only three cars of each will fit in that. And also, we don't even have any steel pipes at the ironworks. So we'd have to supply the ironworks before we'll get more steel pipes. But today, what I want to do is just run down the line back to the freight depot, buy some oil cars, and then actually go and supply this place with crude oil with an oil train. I think we're going to have to actually supply this with multiple trains, mainly because we're going to have to get some ironworks like stuff. It's, it's crazy. We're at the point now where we're actually going to have to supply the ironworks again and i don't even think we have raw iron at the smelter which means we're gonna have to supply the smelter with raw iron and then get that going to the ironworks and then it's just it's a lot of stuff it's gonna be a big process to get this all done so gonna be exciting once we get some oil barrels and sell them but in the meantime we're just gonna deliver the oil and i was just looking and if we look at the cars the oil tankers have a price of 1450 dollars now we've got like seven grand so we'll be able to get a few of them at least I don't know how much oil they actually store. So we're going to head back to base and figure that out. There is a 3% climb coming into this refinery. So whatever engine we use is going to have to be able to support oil cars at 3%. And the crude oil cars are 56,000 pounds each fully loaded. So they're very, very heavy. I think they're actually, they are the heaviest car. Yeah, looking at the list, the next heaviest would be cordwood at 51,000 pounds. So we're basically going to have to have some sort of a crazy engine depending on how many cars we actually get we have like 300 oil i think at the oil fields i don't know how much gets stored per car but we're just gonna buy as many cars as we can and then supply as much oil as we can i can't imagine it would be more than like you know 20 30 per car maybe i mean the coal cars those hoppers they're only 10 so i i don't know to be honest the spreadsheet says 12 per car but the spreadsheet was also wrong on the tools which says 24 so i don't exactly know so if we look at this line, it's actually a really cool route. I'm going to just get out of the uh, the cockpit there. We can actually pull the reg just a little bit, keep it going. But look at this. I actually found that little cut at the very bottom of the map, and it kind of cuts along. So this cut goes back towards the ironworks, and it's super, super sneaky if we look. It's just this weird sort of... I don't know if it was intended by the devs or what the deal is, but I just came down the refinery at sort of like a natural, very, very slight 3% angle, and it ended up putting me almost directly in line with this kind of cut through the terrain. So I decided to use it. We are still level ground to the ironworks. Once we're off that one hill from the refinery, that's it. Like, this is all flat now back to the freight depot. Complete 0% grade. So it's kind of interesting how that worked out, but uh, we need to get on the left line if we're going to follow standard protocol here i mean to be honest we're the only train on the track but let's just slow that down get on the left line i was hoping to do this with betsy too but i don't think it's gonna have the pulling power up three percent uh we have what seven grand we can get probably four oil cars at fifty thousand pounds a piece that'd be twenty two hundred thousand pounds ish up three percent uh the porter only pulls uh sixty seven thousand pounds so we're gonna need a big engine for this probably gonna have to take the cook mogul maybe we, you know let's just honestly i'm just gonna take the class 70 call it a day the class 70 will do it coming back into the freight depot now and actually one thing i was just thinking of that i never realized um we don't have a way to pull the cars out and go directly down this line the entire line where the cars are spawned is going to go out onto the main line and we'd have to go all the way to the logging camp to turn around. Or I mean, I guess we can come through this in reverse and then just flip around somewhere in a shunt yard. But yeah, the way I've got it set up, you have to actually leave on the main line, go to the lumber camp first and then turn around and come back. The, uh, the line is not set up to go left and loop all the way back to the iron mine. I guess we'll just go in reverse. It won't be a big deal. I love how I really have no organization system to the shunt lane. I mean, this is 17 cars. I have 17 or no, 18 stake flats now, and it just barely fits in that lane on its own. So that's like an 18 car lane pretty much perfectly. And they just kind of live there now, which is cool. We got 10 hopper cars hooked up to the cook mogul, which is actually just a really convenient iron train. It works out well because you're always coming downhill loaded, so it can handle it no problem. Um, we're going to take class 70 though, because obviously it's the engine and we're going to get it into position. 
I understand the realism of being able to flick the switches by hand, and I totally get that, um, you know, there's a mod that lets you remote control everything and remote flick switches, but I kind of wish there was something a little bit like Derail Valley in the base game, where you could just, you know, look at a switch from a distance and flick it, so you can still be riding your train when you flick it. I know it's not realistic, but, you know, it's also, it would be nice if it was an option anyway, so we could turn it on and off, but... I know if you want to play full realism, it makes more sense to slow the train down, get out, flick the switch, and then set the train back up and all that, but, you know, sometimes you just want to be able to drive your train without stopping, and being able to flick the switches is super convenient for that. We're going to buy two cars at a time, because then we can spawn them in this lane, hook them up, pull them out, spawn them in, etc, etc. So, oil car, tanker, order, perfect, and another tanker. How much money do we have? We got 4,200. I'll be able to only buy four of them. Yeah. Okay, we've got those two hooked up so we can buy another two. I don't think we're going to actually... We're going to have so much oil. If we actually have 300 oil, which is I'm pretty sure what it was last time, then that means we've got just a ton of oil. If these only hold 12... Okay, can we even afford another one? 1450? No, 1330. We're just shy. So that's fine. We'll have four of them. Should be a good amount of money. And we'll see how much we get. I mean, that was seven grand. These cars are expensive. These tanker cars are the most expensive cars we've bought so far. But, you know, maybe they'll be worth it. I don't know. Alrighty, we're all hooked up and good to go. Uh, just a little casual bump into the wall there. No big deal. Four oil cars. That looks so sick. I would love to run a train of like 20 of these. You just need a ton of money to buy them that would just be insanely expensive but we're gonna get back out onto the main line and then we're gonna back through the freight depot past the y there and then we'll go straight and we'll be good to go it's kind of a weird thing see we need a line that like turns here and gets back onto that track you know we'd still be backwards yeah we need like a big loop that goes around and comes back and gets onto this track all right i've set the reverser on that nice and slow at only like 10 percent or something so hopefully that'll just very, very slowly push that through the depot and we can just run ahead of it and flick all the switches. I'm sure this is exactly how you would do it back in the day. No, you'd have two people because you could have one guy running ahead and flicking switches while the other guy's actually on the train. I very, very much doubt that they would ever leave a train unattended completely. I mean, maybe they did. And in which case, like, you know, that just seems absolutely crazy. But look at that. It's coming. No big deal. It's going to come down this line in reverse. We could even like throw some fuel on it while it's coming by it doesn't matter honestly i haven't had to stock these engine tenders ever they have so much wood to start it's crazy all right so we just got to flick this switch and then that one let it come through the y here and once it's past that switch we can go full speed ahead i don't even see it hope it's not derailed it should be fine right unless i accidentally screwed up a switch somewhere but i don't think i did i think we're good but yeah, it's going to come through here, we'll grab it, and then we'll go full speed ahead down there and pick up some oil, and then go from the oil to the refinery. The routes from the oil to the refinery isn't really that long. It's, you know, pretty much just a straight route. Kind of snakes a little bit, because you got to go through the ironworks or whatever. But, you know, it's a pretty decent route, except for that little 3% section. So, it'll be interesting, like, we might only ever need four cars, just because of how fast you'll be able to do the return trips. You probably won't need to have, like, you know, 20 cars. That seems really quick. Oh my goodness. Alright. What's up? Alright, we're gonna have to just jump on board here and slam the brakes. Because this thing is moving. I'm super excited for when the spline update comes out. We, obviously, when the spline update comes out, it means we're gonna have to probably rebuild all our track in a whole new world, which will be fine. But at least with that, we'll be able to get high-speed trains without the speed limit cap. So it'll be very, very important to build super gradual lines. And lines like this will be able to pull like, you know, 30, 40, 50 miles an hour, which will be just ridiculous. It's going to make the Eureka one of the best engines once you get up to speed. Or like a train of two or three Eurekas, so you have the pulling power and the top speed combined. That would be awesome. And it'll make the gear trains seem much, you know, slower than they are. Because right now the gear trains are, I think the Climax is the only one that's really slow. I guess the highs are slower too, but they don't really feel that slow because the traditional locomotives like the Class 70 here don't really feel that fast by comparison. But with new splines, it's going to be so sick to be able to 
go really, really quick and build super gradual roots. Like, stuff's gonna have to be crazy gradual with crazy shallow corners so you can go really, really fast through everything with huge trains. All right, pull it into the oil fields. Off the double line, doing the old switch, switch, switch thing. It's so confusing to look at, but that's right. This is left, and then that's right again. Look at that, we just snake our way in. It is pretty smooth looking, to be honest. I mean, it's not the greatest. It would be nice if that just came off and went across at a shallow angle, but it's not bad. I will say it's pretty good. And then we just got to make sure we're lined up with the oil field fill-up spot, which is the middle line. I don't know which one of these lines is set, but we got to go down the middle line and then it'll loop back around and come up this one. We'll just cut the reg there. Get a little bit of break. And let's run ahead and check. All right, so we got to flick this one. And flick this one. Perfect. I'm assuming these oil containers... Oh, hello. Can I get on? Thank you. I assume they fill up right in the middle at the top. Looks like there's like a sort of a hatch there. But we've got... Uh, I can't read that. 300 something. 336 crude oil, it looks like. So we've got a fair amount of crude oil. All right, so... Okay, that won't reach. It's kind of interesting to me that the spacing on this is not set correctly. Like, these obviously, you know, this one's a little bit forward, but even then, this one's really far forward from that. It's weird. You'd have to, like, adjust it if you were doing a train of all oil cars. Uh, let's get that. All right, we'll do them one at a time anyway, to be perfectly honest. So let's see what happens here. I gotta get this valve. What, what, what's happening? Uh, hold on. Is there another valve down here? I thought there was a- there's a master valve, right? Master valve. There we go. Okay. Is this working? Can't- I can't tell. Is it loading? Oh, 3 of 12. Okay, it is loading. Perfect. So it is only 12 per car. If we've got 330 something oil, we've got oil for like the rest of the game. I'm literally never going to need to fill this again. I brought way too much stuff to this, apparently. All right, filling up the last tank, and then we're off. Uh, I have a feeling, actually, we don't even need the hatch. I think the oil spigot thing goes far enough into it that we can just close the hatch. Is that is that true? Can't tell. Yep, totally can keep the hatch closed. That's excellent. That is perfect. All right, we'll let this thing fill up. I did try as well, uh, just using the spigot like this. Uh, you can see oil comes out. It doesn't go into the car that way. I know I'm wasting oil. Oh my goodness, what are, we have so much oil. It's ridiculous, honestly. I'm not, I'm not worried. We waste oil, we waste oil. Apparently, oil barrels make a ton of money. They are the, like, final, I guess, thing of the game. But this oil is, like, top tier too, so this should make a fair amount of money as well. Four oil cars going to the refinery. I mean, we could go sell these to the freight depot, I guess. I don't really know how that works, but, you know, we'll bring it to the refinery anyway, and then we'll have to bring lumber and, uh, you know, some of those steel pipes to the refinery at some point as well. But those will be small trains. Luckily, the steel pipes isn't even going to be a big deal. You can just bring a train with, like, two cars, because then you don't even have to unhitch anything, and you're literally two feet from the um, depot. Like, you're two feet from the ironworks where the steel pipes are made anyway. So you could just like go in and boom done problem solved bring two cars with like a porter bring it up deliver them go back deliver them again you could do like four or five runs of that relatively quickly and then there's no unhitching involved that's just such an easier way to do it these oil cars by the way super heavy only with four of them like you can see 100 percent reverser and 100 percent throttle and we took a while to get going and it's gonna take a while to slow down I hope this makes a lot of money. I hope this gets us right back up to that seven grand. I honestly have no idea. I don't have prices on my spreadsheet. I just have like quantities. So I really don't know what the value is of all this stuff. All right, those switches should all be set to get us back onto the main line. Of course, left hand drive, because that's just the way this railroad is set up. So now we should be able to just kind of gun it. And then when we get to the back of the ironworks there, we're going to have to really quickly flick another switch as well. I just realized, actually, we're going to need to make another turnaround loop at the ironworks because if we want to do steel pipe runs from the ironworks straight to the refinery, you have to load up the steel pipes and then we'd have to, like, back up. I guess we could just back up through the Y and then go forward. 
Yeah, never mind. We don't really need to make... You could make, like, a loop here to turn back around, but you could honestly just grab your steel pipes and then go in reverse through the Y and then go forward down the track because the line to the refinery is only a single track anyway. So that's kind of a waste of time to try and make a really, really tight curve here, to be honest, just for those few steel pipe trains. We're only going to run, like, two or three cars of steel pipes at a time anyway. And to be honest, we probably should have the engine in behind and just push the carts all the way to the refinery. Because then you could just push them right into the lane and then back out and back the engine all the way down and just run a really unconventional sort of setup. That would actually probably make the most sense. But anyway, the class 70 hopefully can haul this up 3%. I feel like it can. 250 something thousand pounds. Now, I did build a loop at the refinery. There is a loop that goes around the whole thing and the oil drop off is on the outer loop, which is kind of convenient. It's just the lumber and the pipes that aren't. Which makes me think that the lumber and the pipes, really, it's, you know, not that much. Um, but I honestly don't know. I feel like it's more crude oil than anything, just based on the drop-off locations. And you probably don't need that many pipes or lumber to make a ton of oil barrels. Alright, we're gonna full steam this. 100%, 100%, no brakes. Doesn't feel like we're really going that fast. Got all four oil cars there. This is literally just 3%. It's not very long, like the climb is, you know, it is what it is, but it had to get up onto the plateau. The refinery's built on like its own plateau, it's weird. I think we'll be okay though. Yeah, it seems like the class 70 was a good choice. kind of crazy how high up this hill is. It doesn't seem like much. When I was first scouting my way here, I was just walking straight at the refinery and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, there's a hill here. Okay. And it wasn't really too big a deal. And then when I started building track, I realized, holy cow, this hill's actually like really tall. It's almost up at the tree height. Like from here, you could see through the trees to the ironworks. It's crazy. But anyway, we're just going to loop all the way around, drop off the oil on that platform. The oil barrel pickup is on this side as well, which is why I made this part of the loop. So... Once we actually drop off the oil and get it refined, we'll be able to pick up barrels here. Looks like they've got some little chutes, which is kind of cool. This is a really, really tight corner, by the way. It's probably not going to be fun for the Class 70. That's why we just got no throttle. We're just going to coast on through it. Unfortunately, this is a very, very tight space up here. Could have made this corner a little bit wider, but even then it's hard because of the distance of these two platforms. And then the cliff, I guess we could have gone way out and come back, but it's okay. Alright, so we're just going to go really, really slow here. I'm going to, you know, only do these a couple cars at a time because I don't want to risk the, you know, unloading and moving. I feel like this is valuable cargo. There we go. Alright, how does this work? Oh, it's just literally just drips. Oh, perfect. It's like little teardrops. Imagine that. We only had 12 of those little teardrops. It's like black matter. It's just got incredible density. That gave us 12 crude oil. Fantastic. How much money did that give? We're up to 1600 bucks. Was that only like, was that only like 200 bucks? 1630? Really? How much is it per? 15 per? That's it? Oh man, we're gonna have to deliver so much oil. These cars cost so much money. We're gonna have to do a scouting run. I think we're gonna have to do a scouting run and figure out what we've got at all the different industries because honestly, I have no idea. Um, yeah, I know we got lumber. That's that's for sure. I know the lumber mills is fine. It's usually pretty stocked. I don't know about the smelter situation because we're gonna need raw iron and lumber for the tool works. And then we're gonna need the steel pipes to supply this as well as some more lumber. And then that will get us some oil barrels. And then apparently oil barrels sell for a whole ton but it's going to be a process to get that. So we're going to have to do a scouting run at some point and look around the whole map and just go check what all our industries are. Maybe I'll get my buddies in to come help and we can just run some trains and make some money. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Obviously, we're getting there. I honestly thought the oil was going to be worth a lot more. It is not. That sucks. But maybe I'll get one of my buddies on to just run this oil train over and over again, up and down. And, uh, you know, just deliver as much oil from the oil field as we can. And at the meantime, we can have other people doing the smelter stuff and the lumber routes as well. We could have someone literally doing a dedicated lumber train to supply this and the tool works. And, uh, you know, we could do some iron stuff as well. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure, of course, you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we'll see y'all next time.